I remember a, a young man who was married who was having an affair came up to me and I started talking to him and he was so excited about his affair he was alive and he was trying to convince me how to get his wife to agree that it's to his best happiness that he could have a stable relationship at home and a sizzling fire side chick and he's like why is this so wrong for me to be happy why can I, ha can I not have this woman whom I love I'm married to and this girlfriend that I'm experiencing things I used to experience with this woman that I am at home with but you know things got kind of cold things got predictable there's this routine and and I would like to have both the stability and the excitement and I'm looking at him and I'm thinking like is he demon oppressed possessed or I'm like or is, is like I'm looking and I was like are, are you hearing yourself he's like please understand he says I don't hate my wife I just simply want to have the best of both worlds and he said the, the, the chica that I am having an affair with she's cool with it she's completely okay with me having a wife at home and I said what about your wife she says that that's that's the concern I have I'm like she doesn't know yet he's like no she doesn't he said how do I sell it to her how the, so he's coming to me not the how to repent how to convince his wife that it makes him happy to have both worlds in his hands and I said well good luck telling your wife and as he's saying this as bad as this sounds adultery is sin adultery destroys marriages and adultery it does not fit anywhere nowhere in the Bible and in the relationship even if you're not a Christian it's bad it's wrong period but how many times as I'm listening to him I'm thinking of a Christian who wants to have the best of both worlds the devil doesn't mind if the devil is your side chick and this is why we do it because we say this we say well it makes me happy to have enough God that I don't go to hell and enough of sin that I don't enjoy God it makes me happy Vlad it gives me I love church on Sunday I also love a club on Saturday I love me a lot of ungodly things on Friday night but I, oh man I love God I don't have a problem with God God is the stable side of my life but I want more excitement in my life I want more passion in my life I want more excitement and desire just I just love that why cannot not have two and then you listen about hyper grace or greasy grace like I like to call it where it almost feels like you can do whatever you want and you're forgiven and you're loved and like man God will never leave me he is stuck he's boring but I need him why because the last thing I want is end up in hell when I die so I need God I love God but I need me also some exciting some awesome cool things in my life that I know God is not really pleased with but he maybe he will be okay with it it says in James chapter 4 verse 4 and verse 5 it says do you not know that the friendship with the world is the enmity with God in fact let's open James chapter 4 verse 4 and verse 5 James chapter 4 if you have a Bible app open it to James chapter 4 verse 4 and 5 now it's, it's very strong language I'm, I'm warning you warning faint-hearted warning because James throws this he says adulterers and adulteresses Ooh. he's not talking about people who are cheating on their spouses he says do you not know he's not even saying an affair with the world he says a friendship with the world is enmity with God whoever therefore wants to be a friend of this world makes himself an enemy of God do you think that the scripture says in vain the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously 
meaning the Holy Spirit on this side who dwells with me I am married I am joined to Christ the Spirit lives inside of me he is not indifferent he is not a side chick who's like I don't care the Holy Spirit yearns jealously he is a jealous Holy Spirit not jealous like your ex not jealous like somebody who is overly sensitive but jealous he says I gave myself to you you're a broken piece of dirt I gave my son to you I gave my life all of it in its its entirety to you I deserve it's my right to have all of you not part of you not the Sunday you not the morning devotions you I want all of you I will not share my glory with you with, with nobody else I will not share you with nobody else so he yearns jealously see some of us want God as a side chick we want God who will simply want to have a little bit of us and be okay with it because that's exactly how the world is. Devil does not care if the devil is your side chick. He doesn't care about that. And so today I want to bring just an encouragement, a conviction and an inspiration to each and every one of you. The Lord wants to have all of you. He does not want you. There are people who are sitting on the fence today in this sanctuary and some who are watching us on YouTube, Zoom and Facebook and who will be re-watching it. There's one thing you have to remember about sitting on the fence. Something will hurt after about 15 minutes. It will hurt not 15 five you have the view of both worlds when you're on the fence but you usually end up having none of the worlds and you have this uncomfortable pain that will follow for trying to grab both worlds and being in neither of them fully Christian life is boring only to those who are trying to have both worlds in their fingertips. You will never go deep with God when you're trying to keep God and the other one on the side. When that man looked at me and said that I want to have my stable wife at home and I want to have this hot little thing on the side, I simply told him, I said, if you would give your wife 100% of you, you will be shocked to see how hot and sizzling she is. You will be surprised. I'm like, you married that girl. You fell in love with that girl. That girl is still the same thing that can give you the same feelings. The problem is you're trying to get a 100% benefit from a 50% input. My first point. If, you, if we want to have full-time benefits with Jesus, we must stop being part-time Christians. If we want to have a full-time benefit from Christianity, it has to be not a part-time Christianity for us. Everything we see in the Bible, the benefits are for full-time Christians. There's just only one problem. If you spend your whole life, if your whole life is spent like this, this is what happens. And then you name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, confess it, possess it. He will supply all my needs. He will bless me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. And so we begin to confess the full-time benefits. We lay claim to the full-time benefits. But there's just one problem. If you are a part-time Christian, you can't get the full-time benefits. You can't enjoy Christianity fully. It's because you're trying to indulge in the world partially. And then there's this fear of letting it go completely. The fear is that, man, I'm going to lose my life. Yes, you will. There is going to be a loss of life temporarily until Jesus will give you the life that you dreamed of having and the life you lost to have.